Claude Code is gaining a lot of popularity among developers. Docker MCP Toolkit makes it easy and secure to run and configure MCP servers to automate dev flow. Together, they make a powerful combination as development tools. In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to add MCP servers to Claude Code with Docker MCP Toolkit, how to set up Claude Code, configure three MCP servers, Jira, GitHub, and file systems so you can orchestrate workflows across all three. And everything that I'm gonna show you can turn 30 minutes of manual work into two minutes that's orchestrated. We're gonna give instructions to Claude Code as you see on the bottom right hand corner so that it can scan the entire code base, identify 15 plus to do fix me comments, retrieve Git history for each one, categorize them by business priority, create properly formatted Jira issues, and then link each one back to the exact file and line number, and then give us a nice summary. So let's go ahead, and take a look. Quick note that this video was inspired by this blog here by Ajit Reina that you can follow along. Before we get started, there are a couple of prerequisites. The first is to install Docker Desktop, which you could do from this site here. The next step would be to enable the MCP toolkit. Following this link will bring us to this documentation here, but essentially what you'll need to just do is within Docker Desktop, go to the settings tab and once you do navigate down to beta features and make sure that you have enabled docker mcp toolkit check and once you do you can hop on over here to mcp toolkit where you'll have four tabs and if you go to catalogs you could see all your mcp servers available the next step is to hop on over to my terminal and install claude I'll be using Brew, which is a package manager since I'm on a Mac, and that'll give me a nice clean install. Okay, based on this top line up here, looks like Claude was successfully installed. And to verify, I'll just enter in Claude version. Looks good. So now let's go ahead and just start Claude. I can choose the mode that I want. I will stick with dark mode and I will Stick with number one because I do have a subscription and it is asking me to give it permission so that I could log on with my account. And I'll click enter to continue. Gives me a little bit of warning here, I understand. I will hit enter and I will stick with the recommended settings. And yes, continue to give it permission to work in my directories. So right now we are ready to work with Claude. And if I actually typed in slash MCP, we could see what servers we have access to. And so far we only see this option, manage MCP servers. So why don't we go ahead and bring up our Docker desktop. And as you can see right now, we don't have any servers under my server, but if we hop on over to our clients, we now have the option for connecting with Claude code. And boom, on the bottom right hand side, you see client connected to the MCP toolkit. So now when we go back to Claude code, so to continue, I want to go ahead and restart Claude. So let me go ahead and exit and start it up again. And at this point, when I type in MCP, I could see that I have access to the MCPs that Docker will provide. So now we're going to move on to a, a real world demo. It's going to be a to do to ticket automation demonstration. And uh, we can do this because we've now connected Claude Code to Docker MCP Toolkit. And we now want to see it in action. In this practical example, we're going to be automatically converting to do comments in a real code base into tracked Jira tickets, complete with Git history priority categorization and proper linking and we're going to be required to configure three mcp servers we're going to be orchestrating the file system mcp specifically to scan our code base and read source files then there's the github mcp to run git blame and extract author information and then there's atlassian mcp to create and manage jira issues we'll walk through enabling and configuring all of these three servers 
and configuration for the Atlassian server will be done under the configuration tab here, which we will talk about later. And this also applies to the other MCP servers, always under the configuration tab. As we go through this walkthrough, if you go to my servers, you will end up having three of the MCP servers we just discussed, as you see here. Now, what makes this realistic? We're gonna be using actual code base called catalog service node. We're gonna be extracting git blame info to identify code authors. This process categorizes by business priority using keyword analysis. It creates properly formatted JIRA issues with context and even links back to exact file and line numbers for easy navigation. Now, if we we're doing this manually, this would take us about 20 to 30 minutes. But throughout this process, as it's going to be automated, it should only take it a couple of minutes. So let's go and walk through, starting with configuring the servers. So we're ready to enable Docker to work with Jira issues. But before we can connect Docker in any way to handle Jira issues, we need Atlassian, the parent company of Jira, credentials that tell Docker's MCP server where to look and what credentials to use. If you don't already work with Jira, you'll want to set up an Atlassian account for these credentials. And there's three of them, the Jira URL, your Jira username, which is usually your email, and an API token. To set up an account, you can navigate to the Atlassian.com website. And when you click sign in, you'll have an option to create an account here. And in my case, I just use one of my Google accounts. I can go ahead and show you how to start that process by clicking one of these and then start the process to create your account. Once you have your account, you'll get an option to set up a test project, which will look similar to this. And this will be the test project that we'll interact with. Now you will need to generate an API key and to do so, you'll just want to enter in this URL. You'll be prompted to verify yourself and then you will come to this screen right here, which will give you an option to create an API token. Once you have all your credentials for working with Jira issues, all you need to do is go to the MCP toolkit and under catalog, we can search for Atlassian, which is right over here, and add that. And as you can see here, it says it requires some secrets to work. So for the configuration, all I'll need to do is put in my URL. Of course, you'll have your own Jira username, which is my email. And then for the API token that I created, I will need to put that in for my personal token. And I'll click the check mark. I'll do it again for the Jira API token. Click the check mark. And we're going to keep doing this until we don't see that yellow warning sign. I'll put it for my Confluence personal token and then the Confluence API token. And the nice thing about configuring it like this in Docker is because it keeps all your secrets out of plain environment variables and config files. Everything stays protected inside Docker and you only have to set it up once for the server for it to work across all your MCP clients. One important note here is that it is crucial that we have HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash indicated here. Beautiful. Then I'll go ahead and click save. And now if we navigate to our my servers, we see that Atlassian is set up. So now before we go ahead and configure any other servers, let's go ahead and test to make sure that this one works. So I'm restarting Claude to make sure that it has the latest configuration information. And I'll give it permission right here to access my files. And I'll simply ask it to list the last two Jira issues in my project. Okay, it looks like it will be using the MCP Docker server. All right, this looks good so far. I see it mentioned mobile banking and it's prompting us to get all issues for this specific project, which I'll say yes. Beautiful, and there you have it, MBA 8 and MBA 6, which matches these two right here. Now behind the scenes, you'll notice that we executed Jira get product issues. And if we hopped over to the MCP toolkit and clicked on our Atlassian server, you'll see that there are 42 tools available, which one of them are Jira get project issues. If for any reason you're having issues and you need to look back at your configuration to modify it, 
you can hop over to your configuration tab right over here to either delete the secrets, re-add it, or modify any of the variables up here. All right, so the next server that we want to add onto our list is GitHub, specifically GitHub official, which I'll go ahead and click add server here. I do need to give it some form of authentication and I can do it by a personal access token or using OAuth. And the main difference being is that OAuth gives temporary revocable access through a secure signing flow, while a personal access token is a long lived direct key you could generate manually to give the server ongoing access without logging in. We will be using OAuth. Once I click this link here, I can go ahead and press authorize and it'll bring up this site here. Now I'll click authorize Docker. Select open Docker. And at the bottom right hand corner, you can see login code received for GitHub. And now if we go to my servers, I see GitHub official and under tools, these are the ones that will be available for us to use. And under configuration, it says that it is authenticated. So now let's hop on over to the terminal to give it a test. Okay, and now from the terminal, I am going to restart Claude. I also restarted the terminal session because it did make a difference in my particular case, but sometimes you just need to restart Claude. And from here, I will ask it to do a simple test to get us our GitHub account name. And it looks like it's going to use the MCP Docker. That looks good. We'll hit enter and there you go. The rental, that is my account name. All right, so we are ready to add our last server here. And I created a directory called MCP Toolkit Proj Claude where we're going to put our project in. And I want to make sure that I have a copy of the path here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And then what we're going to do is add the file system MCP server, which is used to allow Claude to read files from our local system. And we're going to need to specify which directories it has access to. So I'm going to go ahead and add the server and then take a look under my servers where it was added. I see the tools here that it has available for us. And under configuration, I'm going to put in the path, hit the plus sign and hit save. And I'll tab away and tab back just to make sure that it's there. And now we're ready for a quick test in the terminal. Now from the terminal, I'll go ahead and start Claude. And for our quick test, we're going to ask it to list allowed directories and see what it returns. And it ideally should indicate the path that we just gave it. Perfect, MCP Docker, list allowed directories. That's the tool it's going to use. We'll say yes. And there we go with our allowed directory, the exact path that we gave it. Okay, so now that we have all our servers installed and configured, we are ready to run our automation. And I'm going to be cloning our test project that we're going to be working off and then navigate into our directory for catalog service node. And what I want to show are the instructions that I'm going to give Claude here. We're going to ask it to scan the code base, extract the comment and surrounding code context. It's going to utilize git blame to ID who wrote it, determine priorities, and then create issues. And lastly, give us a summary. One thing that I want to mention with these directions here is that the only thing that I changed different from what the original blog had is I changed my project ID to MBA so that it matches my Jira project. And in the context of the servers, it's going to be using the file system MCP to scan our directory, the GitHub MCP to run git blame and get author info, and then the Atlassian MCP to create Jira issues.
All right, so we'll start Claude here, and we are going to paste the directions that we just went over and let the magic begin. So right now it's doing all the scanning and reading, and now it's moved on to the Git Blame. And I'll speed this up for editing purposes. And now we move down to creating the Jira issues. Right over here at the very top, you can see that it's invoking the Jira batch and create issues. So it's gonna create a batch of issues. Let's go ahead and accept that to proceed. Looks like it created issues successfully and then started updating some fields. This time I'll hit number two so it doesn't ask me again. It just accepts it by default. So I worked on a lot of high priority issues and now it's moving on to medium and low priority issues. Yes to creating the batch issues. Now we're towards the end where it's creating a summary report. Okay, look at that. Here is our summary report. The total of to do and fix me comments found were 19. And then we have a nice breakdown by priority. Starting off with high, medium, and low. And then the issues that were created are indicated here. And now if I go to Jira, we can now see all these other issues that have been created, which were not there before. So in just under two minutes, Claude has scanned the entire code base, identified 15 plus to do fix me comments, retrieved Git history for each one, categorized them by business priority, created properly formatted Jira issues with full context, and linked each issue back to the exact file and number. For example, if we were to open up this issue here, you could see uh, towards the bottom where there's the GitHub link. What would have taken 20 to 30 minutes of manual work is now automated and consistent. So as you could see, Docker gives you a clean, consistent, and secure way to run everything. And with access to pre-built servers that you can add with just a single click, along with a simple, secure credential setup, the toolkit removes all the manual work that normally slows developers down. And as you saw, once Claude code connects through the MCP toolkit, we can orchestrate multiple servers together. So let me know in the comments which MCP servers that you'd like to see in action next. And of course, if you got value out of this video, make sure to hit that like button and also check out this video here too.